All right. So this smoker, you can find this smoker on uh, YouTube under uh, Chessman's uh, YouTube video of smokers. Uh, this has a heat shield. If you look at the hinges, uh, compare these hinges to uh, another typical beehive. You can see how these are really cheap, all in all, whereas they put a lot of quality into creating that hinge. Um, it has recessed hand grabs uh, on both the front and the back. Uh, even though the leather on the bellows is gone, um, I would sooner keep it original than restore that because as soon as you pull that off, then it's not even the original leather. So I would leave that. If anything, I would put an elastic down here and I'd put a clip on the top, which if you go to any of these uh, bee companies, uh, somebody that buys a smoker, there's a clip that goes on the top that you can put it and you can have it uh, closed at all times rather than having to sit it open. Um, that's, again, even the bottom hinge is the same as the top. We don't have things that look that nice. So the guess of this one is about 1880s. Um, the Clark Cold Blast uh, is just after that. Um, Which is this? Like no, the Clark Cold, Cold Blast is an inverted one like this. The bellows is the same way, but instead of it coming down continuous like a column, it's a V. And the issue is the top opens up and the smoke comes down at the bottom. But that's called a cold blast. This is uh, the same sort of style but just not the same uh, shape. Well, with the, is there a name to that one? Is I it? don't know it. Okay. How old um, do you think that is? The fact with this one is it didn't have a hinge and it's missing the bottom and it's small and it's inverted. I would go back to uh, Cressman and see what he had, but that is an old one. This one here is probably a little bit newer than that one. Um, when I look for smokers, one, I want old ones. And so I'm looking for ones that don't have hinges, because that's typically older. This one is brass. Brass, you don't see here in the United States. I think the first brass one was made by uh, Man Lake, and then later by Data or uh, by uh, uh, Brushy Mountain, but this is brass and that's old. So that's that's an old smoker, a different type of uh, lever for the top to open it. Um, but that I would probably say is 40ish, somewhere in that ballpark. This one I don't know. It's small. Uh, it's galvanized, it doesn't have the hinges on the top. Um, maybe a workman, but it, that's a neat little smoker. Uh, that one I like because it's inverted. Uh, the cart closed, cold blast ones that I have have that same recessed for your hands. Uh, this one, as big as it is, and the fancy, uh, I'd probably say it's a woodman, but that's even the top handle. Like that's just really cool. You've seen the ones where they have actually uh, insulation. Well, does that have the insulation inside? There's one I've been told that has like a, like an asbestos insulation wow. uh, insulation uh, lining. That's yeah, that's cool. There's some that I've seen that are square. Um, this one, I believe, if you go to Cressman again, he has one that looks like this that has has it like this, uh, but it, it doesn't have the hinge. Um, so this might be a, an original one like the one you just got, this one, um, because he had three different, and this actually matches one of them, but some idiot painted it, which is just stupid. So I would probably dip that and pull the paint off, um, but I don't know much about this one other than uh, he has three that are similar to these. And this one, because of no hinge, small, it's tiny, compared to a regular smoker, um, it has the handles, which is telling me that that's uh, late 1800s, early 1900s. Um, 
that's a nice smoker. Sad that somebody again felt to paint it. That's I would have. I have one that is rusted out that it, somebody put duct tape on it, <laughs> and then they used it, and you can see the duct tape is burned. Well, yeah, what see. are you doing? That's awesome. That's awesome. And so even though that has been slightly dis this is nice. The yeah. fact that the bellows is uh, really old. So that's these. And I had a whole bunch more. And, uh, and this piece here? That is, uh, we believe it's from the Daughters of Rebecca, the Masonic uh, group. Uh, they have a lot of symbolism to do with the uh, Skep Beehive. And they have a part of their ceremony where they stick their hands into a thing like a, a basket or a skip basket to pull out things at the end of the ceremony. Um, this one is unique in that uh, there's only one other that I've seen. You push the bee and it's mechanical lid. Um, so this sort of thing is the same sort of thing as this. And this is 1896. So I'm guessing that this is 1880s to 1900. Um, there's nothing like it out there. Uh, there's no documentation that says there's no numbering or lettering or anything on this anywhere. Um, but we don't make things like that. Not today. So, but I'm guessing it's from the Masonic group. And because why would you have something like this? Uh, it's too small for cookies. Uh, you wouldn't have made it for a shop. It, it doesn't. It doesn't have any application other than to have something in it which does fit for the daughters of Rebecca. So that's what I'm guessing that is, but I don't know it for sure. Uh, and in some cases, uh, it's just a matter of going through magazines and seeing if something's listed, but a lot of the things with their stuff is really hidden. Um, I do have embroidered uh, things that have skep beehives and other things that are in silk which showed me that they had lots of interest with uh, skep beehives. The, uh, there are some places online where you can read a little bit more of their ceremonies, where that makes more sense in their ceremonies. What about, I have this piece here with the ashtray, like, do they, you have any history I'm on that? I'm told that it's bronze, and I'm told that it's early 1900s. Um, I've seen them sell uh, on eBay for as much as $300. Wow. Uh, typically, they're up for sale on eBay for about 100, 150 bucks. Um, it looks brass, but I've seen people say that it's bronze um, and not brass. Um, I would say that it's an incense. Uh, okay. It's for incense because it has the things and for the ash, um, but I don't know. But it is a proper bee. It has the double wings. It has the proper toes. It could have had a third one. So, yeah. And are you the... Um, did you design the uh, box? That's called... Uh, An Eco Bee Box Mini Hive. We call it a MUB. Mini Urban Bee Hive. It is for teaching kids, it's for raising queens, it's for producing comb honey, it's good for children all the way up to really old people. It doesn't have to be heavy. It can have a hanger so it can hang from a tree. Uh, it can be up on a pole so that it's off the ground. Bees wouldn't have chose to be on the ground. And so I made it so that it's, it's uh, different. The frames, even though the frames are small, they do interact with regular Langstroth's uh, hives. I've made other things so that they can fit in. The ideal purpose of the small frame is to make uh, comb honey. Uh, every frame that's full is roughly a pound and a quarter to a pound and a half. And they typically sell for $25 a piece. So I sell them with the frame. I put in a new frame. The consumer sees that the bees have capped it, so it's quality control maintained by the bee. Whereas if it's a bottle of honey, it's quality con uh, control maintained by the beekeeper. To sell the frame, the way that the consumer harvests it is they cut it out with their kids. Kids like being a part of it. 
cut it out, drop it into a baggie, squish it like a bean bag, pop holes with a toothpick, drains into your favorite jar. If you don't do it that way, you can just go to the dollar store, buy a colander, cut it, squish it, drop it in the colander, it drains into your container, you're done. So I leave the extracting and the harvesting to the consumer, um, and it saves me a lot of expense, and I get paid the most because it's called me. Do you wrap the frame? or? There's uh, different ways. I've done where I put them into baggies and then I put them into a small little cake box. You can get off of Amazon for about 10 cents. Uh, they look phenomenal because they have a little window that you can look through. People can't squish it and touch it. I do have containers coming that they'll just drop in. And the neat thing with the containers, you can put uh, bees on the frame in those containers and they close like a milk carton, but it's all clear. And so that will be the tiniest mini uh, observation hive that you can actually take into a classroom as a single little uh, container. <coughs> like that. Huh. And so you can have it with honey so that people can't squish it, but you can also have it with bees so that people can take their bees home and put it into their own hive. And of course, all this information and updates are on your website. Then. Uh -huh. And your and website then the magazine, is? magazine, ecobeebox.com. And if you want a copy of the magazine, I have PDF copies that are available. All you have to do is send me an email. Albert at ecobeebox.com. And I'll send you the PDF. Well, that's nice. Um, I'm doing another one, but I'm going to move away from just uh, talking about my stuff, and I'm going to have it on alternative beekeeping. Do you have a card or something for these? I'm oh, me. Sorry, are you oh, no. no, go ahead. Oh, good. I'm going to go and, um, and take a picture that you're fine. I don't, but what I do have is if you have a uh, cell phone. Uh huh. So if you've got if you were nervous about it, you could put in whatever you wanted up there. But air stop, air, all insulation does is keep air from moving. It doesn't really produce anything. So air's not going to move and put a little. I guess I first have to. Yeah, so like I can send you. It's going to be down. We're going to propolize it down. Business card.